This is Tom Bernanke. These are seven nighttime diabetes signs and symptoms that you can't ignore. And we're starting now. Diabetes is shooting up like a rocket. It's said that almost 30 to 40% of people in the United States are pre-diabetics or diabetics and 80 plus percent don't even know it. So that means you could be having these signs and not know that you're a pre-diabetic or a diabetic. So you should not ignore these signs. Diabetes is just such a brutal disease. It's shooting up everywhere in America, in Europe, in China, in India. It is consuming a large portion of the world now and is one of the most significant causes of kidney disease, blindness, arterial sclerosis, and just poor health in general. And today we're talking about the nighttime symptoms of diabetes and how they can significantly impact the quality of your life and how we can address their management. And it's important if you're experiencing any of these signs, definitely go see your primary care doctor. I would love to see it as well. But early detection and treatment of diabetes can help manage these symptoms and reduce the risk of complications. So in medicine, we want to get to the point where we're, where we're preventing it rather than treating it later. Statistically, the International Diabetes Federation estimates that over 500 million adults over the age of 20 will be living with diabetes. I've seen an estimate that it's probably over 800 million in the near future. And it's expected to grow to 800 million by about 2050. That's crazy. And the pre-diabetes is even higher. It's like three, four times higher. Research indicates that sleep disturbances, including signs and symptoms, are seen at a much, much higher rate than people in the general population. A study by the American Diabetes Association found that sleep disturbances are reported in 50% or more of individuals with diabetes. Here's the countdown. I ordered it myself from least important to most important. Number nine, insomnia or poor sleep quality. This is actually very important. I don't want to make it seem like it's not important, but high blood sugar levels can lead to discomfort and frequent urination, disrupted sleep patterns. I'm a big believer in REM sleep, proper hormone levels at night, but with diabetes, you have an increased rate of obesity, sleep apnea. All of these things can contribute to sleep quality. Statistically, less than six hours of sleep time is associated with a 10 to 15 point rise in blood sugar all of the next day. So you don't even have to be eating crappy foods. That adrenaline the next day will raise your blood sugar and almost make you a diabetic because you're not sleeping well. It's a vicious cycle. People who do sleep well seven or eight hours have much lower blood glucose the next day and much less disease and mortality. So if you can't sleep well, if you're sleeping six hours or less every day, you might have blood sugar issues. Number eight, sleep position issues. Diabetes and high blood pressure can make your joints stiff, your back stiff, your muscles stiff, they can lead to poor blood flow down to your feet because your blood is more viscous, it has more sugar in it, there's less nutrition, your feet can ache, they can throb, they can tingle. This can cause sleeping on the side, the back. This can lead to hip issues, back issues, neck issues, shoulder issues, sciatica, lower pain, lower back pain, hamstring tightness. I have a video that goes over all the sleep positions, best pillows, best ways to sleep. I link that all below. Check that out if you have a hard time sleeping and bad positions at nighttime. Seven, nighttime cramps. Nighttime cramps can result from high or low blood sugar, reduced circulation, or diabetic ne neuropathy. So nerve disease is very common with diabetes, especially more viscous blood, and that makes your toes spasm, you can tingle, you can have spasms, your feet can ache. A lot of times people see me for restless leg syndrome, but it's really just things like diabetes or sore muscles that make the nerves spasm and ache. I would say 90% of the time, I know I get attacked in my restless leg video because it's more of a nerve pain video because that's what people present to clinic to see me about. Prevention includes stable blood sugar control, gentle stretching, hydration, mineral intake, and appropriate footwear. I have a lot of guides on peripheral neuropathy, nerve pain. Check that out below. Include best supplements, best foods, best everything. Number six, nighttime frequent thirst. Increased thirst at night is a sign of elevated blood sugar. Managing it involves overall diabetes control and hydration. Balancing fluid intake and reducing caffeine and alcohol can help a lot. Alongside frequent urination, increased thirst, 
especially during the night, can be a big sign of diabetes. The body's attempt to rid itself of excess glucose can lead to dehydration, prompting increased thirst. Number five, nighttime hypoglycemia. Nighttime hypoglycemia means low blood sugars during sleep. This needs regular monitoring and sometimes eating or drinking something at nighttime can help. Adjusting insulin dosages under your doctor's care can be important because sometimes taking too much can make a big deal, sometimes can throw you off and give you issues, and it's not good to pass out from hypoglycemia at night. This can lead to sweats, nightmares, waking up feeling tired, or a massive migraine. Studies show that 25% of low blood sugar episodes in type 1 diabetics occur at night, and this could lead to ruining the next day because you're just so beat up and sore. Number four, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea can lead to insulin resistance and poor blood sugar control. Managing sleep apnea involves lifestyle changes, weight loss, and the use of a CPAP machine. Sleep apnea is such a big deal. I have a brother who had sleep apnea and he ended up having it corrected surgically and his life changed. He was so tired every day, but as soon as he got his blockage corrected, he felt so good the next day, but there's nasal strips, there's breathing devices, there's CPAP machines. Everybody who does this feels a million times better. I have a video that goes over sleep apnea, everything you can do, check that out down below. Number three, restless leg syndrome. There's true restless leg syndrome, which is a brain issue, and some healthy people do get this, but I'm telling you, 90 plus percent of people that come see me, it's usually stretched nerves, peripheral arterial disease, diabetes, and as you correct these issues and look at the labs and the underlying issues, it makes a massive difference. Lifestyle changes like reducing caffeine, alcohol, moderate exercise can help with restless leg syndrome, but at the same time, getting blood levels, getting this diagnosed, good shoes, good orthotics, massaging the muscles, strengthening the muscles, doing a biomechanical exam works majority of the time. I'm telling you, I've had so many people come in with this restless leg syndrome and a proper workup has solved this issue. So if you're in the Michigan area, I'd love to see you for this. This condition causes uncomfortable sensation in the legs with an urge to move. Number two, night sweats. This can be very common and indicates low blood sugar levels and hypoglycemia. This requires monitoring and adjusting potential triggers, especially if you're taking diabetic medicine. Dosages can be adjusted, but at the same time, it could be that your blood sugar is just not regulated well with your body. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it shoots low in a rebound. As a symptom of nocturnal hypoglycemia, night sweats can be a frequent issue for people with diabetes, particularly those who are insulin dependent. And number one, Nocturia. This means frequent urination at night and is linked to elevated blood sugar levels. Strategies to manage nocturia include regulating blood sugar and monitoring fluid intake. So a good rule is you don't want to eat three hours before bed. You don't want to drink two hours before bed. One of the most common symptoms of diabetes is frequent urination, especially at night. This happens because the kidneys are trying to expel excess sugar from the blood. And coincidentally, diabetes is the number one cause of chronic kidney disease, which I would not wish on my worst enemy. This is such a bad disease. You wanna get ahead of it. Make sure to check out my video on the diets for your kidney disease. A study found nocturia is significantly more common in people with diabetes compared with those without diabetes by a lot. There is so much you can do about diabetes. Check out my skin signs of diabetes, foot signs of diabetes, and the best diet to reverse diabetes down below.